We are currently in our third winter in the trailer, and last month, right before Christmas, we had the coldest temperatures we've experienced since we moved here. Some of our winter setup worked pretty good, and other parts, not so much. So let's go back in time a month and see how we held up during that cold snap. Well, supposedly we're in a winter storm. Doesn't look like it snowed that much overnight, though. I guess it is a little windy. Let's check the current weather. Minus 6 degrees and minus 33 wind chill. Eh, not to worry. I already did a lot of preparing. For all the smaller windows, I made custom inserts from Reflectix insulation on one side and Insulbrite fabric on the other. These just kind of pop in, so I can take them in and out easily if I want to use the window. One of our two big windows doesn't face the sun, so last year I made a custom panel out of foam board insulation. This one is tough to squeeze in, so it stays up all winter. The other big window I typically leave uncovered because it can get warmed up from the sun, but we had a giant piece of heavy duty cardboard on hand, so I went ahead and taped it up on the outside just to see if it would help during this cold snap. All the windows in the main living area have curtains made from fleece fabric or are simply blankets, and you can really tell a difference in draftiness and temperature when the curtains are open versus closed. In addition to our propane furnace, we run the electric fireplace pretty much 24-7 for at least six months out of the year, and we are warm and toasty in the RV even on a cold day like today. The dog seems warm and happy too. This is a great opportunity to check for drafts and see where we can improve on our insulation. We noticed a little snow had come in the door overnight and there is frost on both sides of the metal rim, so I'll need to add some new weather stripping. Most of the windows are frosted on the inside, even though they were covered. The only window that didn't have frost was the one with the cardboard taped on the outside. So we'll have to work on our window and door situation but otherwise we're doing good. Wait, the kitchen tap isn't working. Well, that's strange. The bathroom sink and toilet are working fine. Well, guess it's time to get bundled up and check the water situation. Our water source is pretty well protected under some Reflectix and has a heated cord wrapped around it with foam insulation over that. The hose goes under the ground and up into the trailer. Here's our water filter, which is also heat taped. Since the bathroom water is running, we guessed the freeze must be under the camper. Before our first winter here, my husband installed foam board panels all around the base of the trailer, which blocks the wind and keeps the underbelly a little warmer. There is one loose panel which gives us access underneath, however it looks like we can't find the freeze point because the underbelly is covering the kitchen sink pipes. We're trying a small space heater to see if it will help. Now, I have not been brave enough to leave an electric heater unsupervised yet, but lots of RVers do it. I'm sure Barn Cat Tiger will appreciate it since it's next to his little cat shelter. A day into our winter storm and the temperatures have risen to a balmy 11 degrees with only a minus nine degree wind chill. I don't think the space heater was big enough to make a difference, but at this temperature, our kitchen tap has thawed and is working normally. We can't tell yet if there was any damage from the pipe freeze so we'll just have to keep an eye out for any leaks as we continue to use the tap. However, our saga was not over yet. Our water pipes weren't the only thing warming up that day. I noticed the frost buildup in our fridge was thawing and realized that since it was so cold outside, the fridge didn't think it needed to cool the food inside. But we hoped that once the temps rose, the fridge would start working again. By this time, the extreme cold had passed. Unfortunately, we never could get our refrigerator working again and had to get a replacement. The same model RV fridge was extremely expensive and we didn't want to risk it failing the next time we had an extreme cold, so we decided to try a much cheaper mini residential fridge. I called a mobile RV tech to help us remove the old fridge and cap off the propane and unused wiring, and the new fridge simply plugged into the existing 110 volt outlet. Since a residential fridge works differently than an RV fridge, we no longer needed to keep the open vents at the back and could safely seal them up. We will eventually put up some plywood and insulation, but for now, as a quick fix, I used the supplies I had on hand and sealed up the vents with styrofoam insulation on the inside, and then added half-inch green board insulation on the outside. This has worked perfectly to keep the cold and wet out, and I no longer have to worry about losing our fridge to extreme temps. So it has been a month since that winter storm and we're still doing fine, but we have learned a few ways we can improve our setup. 
but even after all that drama, I still prefer living in the trailer in winter over the heat of the summer. There's just something so cozy about living in the small space when it's cold outside. Well, it's time for a nap. See you in the next video.